dragon spits fire. China launches massive military drills. Multiple ballistic missiles fired. Taiwan counters Chinese provocations. Taiwan deploys fighter jets. China-Taiwan standoff. China has raised temperatures more than ever before. The seas around Taiwan are boiling with military equipment. There are missiles flying, there are ships at sea, there are fighter aircraft in the air. With China's bluff being called out following Nancy Pelosi's visit, the country is now keen to flex muscle and demonstrate that it means business. But does it mean business? Or are these just the usual dragon mind games? I'm Shiva Roor. I'm going to take you to Taiwan in few minutes from now to show you what's happening there and how the island is reacting to this big, big ratcheting up of military tension around Taiwan. I'm Shiva Roor. These are the headlines first. Big India Today scoop in the National Herald case. After raids and ceilings, will Herald Link properties be attached? Rahul Gandhi says he's not scared of Modi and the ED. Rahul Gandhi takes on RSS day after BJP's Tiranga rally. Congress MP says RSS did not hoist the tricolor for 52 years after independence. BJP claims Congress showing pseudo love for the Tiranga. BJP mocks Congress Chief Minister face Nataka. DK Shivakumar and Siddharamaya hug on Rahul Gandhi's queue on stage. Is this a hug Nataka taking centre stage? That's my big story at 5.30pm. Sena MP Sanjay Raut's Enforcement Directorate custody extended to the 8th of August in Patra Chol case. Raut's wife Varsha also summoned over transactions from her accounts. Take a look at what China has done in the last 12 hours of this escalating standoff over Nancy Pelosi's successful visit to Taiwan. Eight images that I've picked out for you to show you how China is brandishing military muscle very, very close to Taiwan with ballistic missiles fired across the island to aircraft buzzing the median line in the Taiwan Strait to fighter jets on combat patrol not very far from the air defense zone, to long-range artillery being fired from coastal beaches into the Taiwan Strait. Attack helicopters and bombers also on aerial sorties around the island as part of an extensive network of military drills designed specifically to intimidate and grind on Taiwan and send out a signal to the world that China meant business when it issued threats following the arrival of Nancy Pelosi earlier this week. These are the defining images of the day. As tension between China and Taiwan has risen over the Nancy Pelosi visit, let's get you the big defining images that we've been tracking on China's part. Number one, the first defining image that we've got for you. The Chinese state-sponsored media flooding the internet with videos of its missiles blasting off. The Global Times put out this video of a Chinese Army Eastern Theater Command rocket force launching a ballistic missile to designated waters somewhere in eastern Taiwan. Official Chinese video showing a ballistic missile launch. The second defining image of the day today. Another video showed the Chinese military exercises near Taiwan. The island nation claims that the PLA has fired at least 11 Dongfeng ballistic missiles in waters surrounding Taiwan. You can see uh, vapor trails of missiles and artillery 
across the coast of China today. Images like these taken by civilians flooding Chinese social media of missiles fired across Taiwan. Remember, Taiwan is just about 80 miles off the coast of China. The third big defining image of the day, the PLA Army's latest long-range, multiple-range rocket systems have been spitting fire at targets in designated areas in the Taiwan Straits, all in a demonstration of lethal strike power. These videos also released by the Chinese mouthpiece, the Global Times, in an attempt at propaganda and muscle flexing and power projection designed to intimidate and rattle the world at this time and especially the island of Taiwan. China made its three-day large three-day large-scale military exercise earlier today. It began those exercises. These are images and they're defining image number four. The video shows choppers hovering. The exercise is being conducted in six waters around Taiwan. Images of utility and attack helicopters, all part of this exercise, very close to Taiwan. Image number five, 27 Chinese Air Force warplanes flew into Taiwan's air defense zone on Wednesday. They included J-11 strike fighters, J-16s as well as Su-30s. All air superiority and multi-role strike fighters that have been conducting intimidatory operations. Also, these H-6 bombers have been flying very close to the Taiwan Strait, all in an effort to rattle once again and play mind games, psychological operations to frighten, rattle and intimidate. This time these aircraft flying over the median line of the Taiwan Strait on which there is tacit understanding between China and Taiwan that they should not and will not be crossed. Well, they've been crossed big time. The tensions are continuing to rise Taiwan remains war ready at this point of time. Taiwan's own Ministry of Defense has been putting out images of the missiles as they cross the island. This has happened before, but never with such intensity and at a time when the entire island is encircled by the Chinese Navy conducting these so-called drills. Here's a look at precisely how China has raised those temperatures. The dragon has bared its fangs and it's raining missiles, long-range rockets and more at the Taiwan waters. Chinese military propaganda has peaked hours after US Speaker Nancy Pelosi left Taiwan after a 15-hour whirlwind tour. Beijing's state-sponsored media is flooding the internet with videos of military drills being carried out near Taiwan. The Taiwanese Defense Ministry has confirmed that the Chinese army launched at least 11 Dongfeng ballistic missiles into waters surrounding the northern, southern and eastern parts of Taiwan. A brigade of China's PLA 80th Group Army also carried out a live fire assessment of heavy firearms rapid strike. Over the next three days, the Chinese army will carry its large-scale military exercise in six waters around Taiwan. From land to air. 27 Chinese warplanes flew into Taiwan's air defense zone on Wednesday. They include six J-11 air superiority fighter jets, five J-16 multi-role fighter jets, and 16 Su-30 air superiority fighters. Taiwan has said that Chinese fighter jets were warned on the radio the moment they crossed the median between mainland China and Taiwan. The Taiwanese waters too are heating up.
Both Chinese and US warships have been circling Taiwan amid Chinese anger over Pelosi's visit to the island. US has deployed four warships, including an aircraft carrier. US Navy carrier USS Ronald Reagan is conducting operations in Philippines Sea. Bureau report, India Today. Well, it isn't just the Chinese military that's flexing muscle in this area, because remember, Taiwan is not alone in any potential military standoff, because the United States is Taiwan's biggest supporter and its biggest ally. Nancy Pelosi was there, and she affirmed that commitment, and that's the reason why the U.S. Navy, with a carrier battle group, is in the waters of that region and flexing its own muscle, and expect this also to become much more intense as the days go ahead. Take a look. USS Ronald Reagan, Nimitz class, aircraft carrier, somewhere east of Taiwan in the South China Sea. Amongst the world's largest supercarriers, the USS Ronald Reagan is quietly carrying out a patrol to ensure free and open Indo-Pacific in the South China Sea. As China begins four days of live fire exercises, after having surrounded Taiwan from six sides, including firing ballistic missiles, the US carrier battle group is watching from a distance as it carries out a patrol in the Philippine Sea. Every move of the Chinese Navy and Air Force including the crossing of the median by Chinese Air Force fighters before they returned, and the Chinese ships and submarines are being monitored very closely, both by Taiwan and the United States. USS Ronald Reagan has conducted flight operations in the Philippine Sea. The carrier battle group is the only forward deployed battle group carrying out a regular scheduled patrol. As part of the patrol, the anti-ship and anti-submarine warfare exercises are being conducted by MH-60R Seahawk multi-role naval helicopters in the South China Sea. Amphibious assault ship Tripoli is also a part of the US Navy's 7th Fleet that is operating along with guided missile cruiser USS Chancellor Will. These warships have been sailing through the South China Sea in the past 24 hours. To show complete sea control and dominance, ensuring free and open Indo-Pacific, fueling at sea operations are also being undertaken. Simultaneously, US Army paratroopers are conducting combined active operations in Indonesia called Exercise Super Garur Strikes. The US Navy Pacific Fleet incidentally is the world's largest fleet. USS Abraham Lincoln, the second aircraft carrier part of the Pacific Fleet, is sailing in formation as part of RIMPAC 2022 exercises, where 26 nations are participating with 38 ships and 170 aircraft in a massive show of joint operations and to test interoperability. China and its actions around Taiwan are being watched closely by navies across the democratic world. Bureau Report, India Today. And I want to tell you what weapons, aircraft and ships the Chinese military is now using as part of this campaign of intimidation, additional intimidation of Taiwan at this point of time. One of the chief weapons you're seeing streaking across the skies from the Chinese coast and over Taiwan are the Dongfeng DF-15 short-range ballistic missiles. China has hundreds of these. They've been firing these from coastal batteries. Another common weapon being fired today by the Chinese over Taiwan, very close to their waters, is the Dongfeng 17. That's a medium-range ballistic missile that has set a lot of alarm bells ringing. This has happened before, but never with such intensity. The Shandong and Liaoning are the two Chinese aircraft carriers which have left their ports and they are both approaching 
the area around Taiwan. Now, China will say that these are routine deployments, but those deployments have already started. Chinese Type 055 stealth guided missile destroyers are very much part of the large number of military drills happening around Taiwan at this point of time. There are several of these ships out there. They're armed to the teeth. There's Shenyang J-11 Air, superior, air superiority fighters that the Chinese reverse engineered from Russia many years ago. These are flying very close to the Taiwan Strait median line. There are also J-16, Shenyang J-16, uh, multi-role strike fighters that the Chinese are using at this point of time to kind of, uh, you know, project air power and air superiority over Taiwan, which has a far smaller air force. China's most advanced aircraft, the J-20, the Chengdu J-20, which is a fifth-generation stealth fighter, is also, we hear, being used in air patrols and combat uh, missions uh, at this point of time during those uh, during those uh, war exercises. The Xi'an H6, and you saw pictures of it a moment ago, are long-range strategic bombers. These are also flying missions not very far from the Taiwanese air defense space. PHL-03, long-range rocket artillery. These are the rockets that were being fired from the beaches, the coast of China into the Taiwan Strait. And of course, Xi'an Y-20 heavy military transport aircraft are also being demonstrated in flights because these are the aircraft which would deliver troops if ever China needs to mount any kind of a large troop delivery exercise into Taiwan, which has never happened so far. So obviously Taiwan isn't just a sitting duck. It has weapons of its own, many of them supplied by the United States. But what are these counters? For instance, in response to the Dongfeng missiles, which are being fired by, Ch by China, Taiwan has the Skybo anti-missile system, which is capable of shooting down those uh, sh shooting down those missiles. The Chinese J-11 fighters, well, Taiwan has F-16 fighters, advanced F-16 fighters supplied by the United States. The Chinese J-16 multi-role strike fighters. Taiwan has Mirage 2000 fighters of French origin, very much like the ones we have here in India. The Chinese J-20. Stealth aircraft, the fifth generation stealth aircraft, very difficult to detect, very difficult to engage and shoot down. Uh, Taiwan has the Patriot air defense system, but very difficult to actually detect these, these aircraft. Now coming to the Chinese warships. Remember there are aircraft carriers, there are destroyers that have been deployed uh, you know, around Taiwan. Taiwan is absolutely bristling with American anti-ship harpoon missiles. It has them on its island territories and in many other locations on the island. So it is absolutely peppered with anti-ship missiles because of the sheer size of the Chinese Navy. Now, you've also got uh, long-range bombers that the Chinese uh, have been flaunting and deploying. China has, uh, the Taiwan, of course, has air defense missiles of many different kinds that it has in different batteries all across the island as well as its uh, uh, as the mainland as well. So it's not like Taiwan is undefended. It has its own weapons, but it also has the help of many of its allies. I want to go across to India Today's Gaurav Savant, who's been tracking the U.S. exercises, the Chinese exercises encircling Taiwan at this point of time. Gaurav, uh, what is the sense you're getting? You know, are these... Uh, are, are these, you know, the usual tried and tested intimidating tactics? Or do you think that things could actually escalate into some kind of a shooting standoff? They're firing missiles across Taiwan. They've got ships encircling the entire island. They've crossed the median line of the Taiwan Strait with armed fighter aircraft. The U.S. Navy, as you reported, is also, you know, flexing muscle not very far away. It's an extremely tense situation, Gaurav. Shiv, it indeed is a very tense situation and a spark neglected could burn the house. And that's the apprehension. What China appears to be doing right now is actually a dress rehearsal of what China intends to do in the years to come. And China has made its plans very clear. China has said it will not wait indefinitely to reunify the Republic of China or uh, Taiwan with mainland China. And they will use force. They're saying so in as many words. That, of course, is easier said than done. But that's exactly what China intends to do. Use its missiles, use its fighter jets, use its ships to blockade Taiwan. It started blockading Taiwan. It'll do so for four days. Shiv, what if it were to do it 
for eight days, 16 days and longer. What would that lead to? What if it were to cut the undersea cables for internet? What it were to do, uh, you know, escalate it? What would the world do? Taiwan can defend itself in a shooting war situation and you've shown the weapons that Taiwan carries. Now, USS Ronald Reagan is in South China Sea. America is trying to send across a message that sea lanes of communication have to be kept open. But does that include the Taiwan Strait? Uh, that's extremely critical because that is where China is trying to blockade uh, uh, ta Taiwan right now. What happens subsequently? Should there be a blockade of Taiwan? Is there a retaliatory action uh, in the Malacca Straits or the Homu Straits where China can be blockaded? So it depends on what democracies intend to do. There is a massive exercise that democracies will carry out. Australia, uh, uh, United States, uh, there are several other countries, including Japan and Korea. Uh, in one exercise, India will also be a part of that exercise. So democracies are coming together uh, for an air exercise, for a sea exercise. It remains to be seen yeah. how specific to China will these exercises be. Gaurav, thanks very much for getting us that update. So things are a bit of on a bit of a hair trigger because China is using live ammunition in this extensive series of exercises of the intensity of which haven't happened in many, many years before. I can't remember exercises of this ha kind happening so close to the island. I want to show you just how close all this firing is actually taking place because it's unnerving the world right now because there are ships, there are aircraft, there are bombers, there are drones, there are ballistic missiles flying, uh, you know, from, from one country across the other island and things are definitely, definitely tense. Now take a look at where things stand right now. This is the Chinese coast. It's about 80 miles to Taiwan. That's the, main, uh, 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 the, 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 the mainland of Taiwan as it were. This is what the Chinese drills look like right now, viewer. You've got ships, You've got aircraft and you've got six different locations, not one, not two, not three, but six different locations, six different patches of sea around Taiwan, virtually encircling the entire island. As a result of which, it is practically a mini blockade of Taiwan. In effect, what the Chinese Navy is doing is saying, at short notice, if we want to, we can deploy our ships and you will not be able to actually do anything because we have you completely encircled. Now remember, this is the Taiwan Strait. This is the median line. These aircraft have already crossed this median line. 27 aircraft have crossed the median line. Now the ballistic missiles that are being launched are being launched from places on the coast of China. And these ballistic missiles are basically, are basically going all the way, all the way across the island and falling in seas just west of Taiwan and east, uh, just uh, uh, east of Taiwan. That, that means you've got these missiles practically flying into Taiwanese airspace, crossing the island and splashing down into the water there. Now the situation as far as Taiwan is concerned is these are all its waters right now and the actual exercises that are taking place are very close to Taiwanese waters. Now the median line has already been breached and the artillery that's being firing from here could easily reach Taiwan if the need arises. But what China is basically doing is firing into the Taiwan Strait now, just demonstrating that it's possible for us to fire anytime we actually want. Now remember, the US Air Force is the US Navy and the US military are currently exercising somewhere in this region. This is where the U.S. Navy is situated. There are aircraft carrier. There's, there's one aircraft carrier battle group. There are probably submarines uh, in some of these areas. There are U.S. Navy destroyers that have been sighted south of Taiwan as well and released by the Chinese. But the situation is extremely tense. I want to emphasize once again that the distance between the Chinese mainland, this distance, is just about 80 kilometers. That's a tiny, tiny distance when you talk about even short-range ballistic missiles. And here, China is deliberately using uh, ballistic missiles that have a longer range to show we can fire missiles easily that can simply cross over the island. Just imagine how dangerous this is. Crossing into this airspace, imagine if there is a small little targeting error. Imagine if one of these missiles or one of these rockets hits one of uh, Taiwan's cities or hits one of Taiwan's ports or hits one of Taiwan's ships by mistake. Imagine 
what that could actually trigger. It's a scary situation, but I want to leave you with that image because that's where the theater of action currently is. We're going to keep a very close eye on what's happening around Taiwan. It continues to be our big focus story, and that's the reason why we're the most channel watched channel on this story as well. Up next on Five Live, we're shifting focus from Taiwan, and we're bringing it down to a far smaller battlefield of Karnataka, where, well, this is a viral video, which if you haven't seen, you're going to love it. DK Shivakumar and Siddharamaya are forced to hug because Rahul Gandhi on stage tells them to. Incredible video. That's coming up next. Let's talk about what kind of a response China could put forth. They've already been putting out warnings, uh, you know, very provocative statements, military drills, etc. But going forward, there's global suspense right now about what China will do because they want definitely of retaliation. There could be possibly military retaliation against the United States, but this is highly unlikely considering that even China knows what they're up against. The Chinese are taking military action against Taiwan again very unlikely at this point. They could, however, raise military temperatures around Taiwan. Uh, this is already happening right now because you're seeing military drills happening in the Taiwan Strait, uh, as well as five other locations surrounding the island nation. So this is happening and could, in fact, be increased and escalated a lot more. China tightening the area denial in the South China Sea. Again, likely South China Sea dispute could heat up in the coming weeks. An economic clampdown on Taiwan, something that's not just likely, but has already begun with imports on citrus fruits, all of that being suspended right now by China. Trade aggression against the United States in the form of economic sanctions. This is also highly possible uh, as a step being taken by China. We've seen what's happened between Russia and Ukraine and how sanctions now is the way forward. China could take a leaf out of that book. China could also accelerate uh, the steps for the reunification of Taiwan. And this uh, at this point, it's unclear of how China will go about this, what kind of steps they could take on this particular front. But it's like we said, Taiwan, no doubt, is going to face the heat of whatever retaliation or steps China takes. Everyone's busy finding what's trending. You're busy finding out why. India Today, for those who research before reacting. Download the India Today app now. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Have you looked at back of the water bottle and found that it has an expiry date? The shelf life of water has been debated for long. So let's find out how long stored water remains safe for consumption and what happens if you consume expired water. Treated tap water is safe to consume for up to 6 months if stored well, while sparkling water is safe for up to 1 to 2 years. Tap water might start tasting odd if it gets mixed with the carbon dioxide in the air. However, both tap water and carbonated water are considered safe for drinking for 6 months despite the odd taste. Water in its pure form doesn't expire, but the plastic bottle has an expiry date. Drinking from an expired bottle isn't a good idea. Plastic can start leaching into the water over time and contaminate it with harmful chemicals such as antimony and bisphenol. 
To preserve water for long, it's important to store it well. The first step is to identify the amount of water to be stored and find a cool and dry place. Copper and steel vessels are ideal for long-term storage. For regular use, one can always offer BPA-free plastic containers or glass bottles. To avoid contamination, one should refrain from using pipes and fill it directly from the faucet after filtration. If faucet is stored in gallons or drums, there should be a lid on it at all times to avoid contact with air. Exposure to BPA, which is used in plastics, has been known to interfere with reproductive development in animals. It has also been linked with other cardiovascular diseases, immunity diseases and diabetes in humans. Filtration of water is must. The easiest way is to bring it to boil for around 15 minutes and let it cool. Most modern households use water purifiers nowadays. However, regular servicing of reverse osmosis, purifiers and changing candles is crucial. Liquid bleaching is rare these days but has been a popular purification method in the past. All eyes were on Rahul Gandhi when he was chief guest at the Siddharam Otsava, the 75th birthday celebrations of former Congress Chief Minister of Karnataka, Siddharamaya, who, as you know, is currently bogged down in a very public feud with his party state president, D.K. Shivakumar, over who should be the next chief ministerial face. Well, all eyes were on Rahul Gandhi in the hope that he would get them to bury the hatchet. And look at the video that's gone viral. Rahul Gandhi literally demonstrating like that and telling the two leaders to hug on stage and not just hold their hands aloft. That video has gone viral with detractors and rivals of the Congress party saying this is all just drama. These two men were forced to hug by Rahul Gandhi but their enmity is real in real life. Take a look at what happened. Thank you. Two warring Karnataka Congress satraps embracing. It should be music to Congress ears. But alas, it may have been a forced show of Bonhomi. Look closely and you can see Rahul Gandhi prodding bitter rivals DKS and Siddharamaya to kiss and make up. The gesture from Rahul did manage to do the trick for the cameras. And the two Kong stalwarts indeed hugged. But the opposition BJP, which tweeted the video, is already poking fun at Congress, calling it a staged show to brush the internal power feud under the carpet. D.K. Shukumar, out of compulsion, attended yesterday birthday bash of Siddharama. Even there, he was not harmonious towards him. When Rahul Gandhi prompted him to hug Siddharamaya, only then he did it. It is only, the optics is only for public consumption. Congress for the record continues to claim that all is well in its Karnataka wing. No, no, no. See, Congress, there is no tussle in, for Chief Ministerial Post because Congress always have had a stand that whenever we have, we have elections, we get our own numbers. After that, um, the legislature party will meet, the um, members' opinion will be taken. Then, based on the opinion, the High Command will decide the Chief Ministerial Candidate. <laughs> Earlier, it was a cake-cutting moment that the Congress used to project that DKS and Siddharamaya have buried the hatchet. After the bruising battle over who gets to be the projected Congress CM face. Rahul Gandhi had specially flown down to enforce a truce in its war-torn Karnataka unit.
But is his Herculean effort proving to be a flimsy patch-up? Which may boomerang for Congress like the Chani Sidhu episode in Punjab? With Nagarjun Dwarkanath in Bengaluru, Bureau Report, India Today. And remember, this is not a trivial issue over just a hug because that in that hug lies the big question over whether the Congress party is going to be a united front and battle ready to take on the Bombay government nine months from now or is it just a facade for the cameras because of all the attention being paid to the very ugly spat between DK Shivakumar and Siddharamaya. Difficult to believe that they are on the same side, but these pictures in many ways have served as a kind of balm for those who are wondering why is the Congress leadership allowing these two towering figures of the Congress party to fight in this escalatingly ugly public manner. So is it a real hug, a real truce burying the hatchet between these two leaders? Or is this just a temporary photo op for the cameras? The real bad blood continues to fester. Joining me live from Karnataka, Dr. Narendra Rangappa, BJP spokesperson. Also with us is Aishwarya Mahadev, spokesperson of the Congress. Welcome to you both. Dr. Rangappa, wh you know, why is the BJP calling this, uh, uh, you know, just a... Uh, you know, just a drama for the cameras. The two leaders, you know, look, they appear to be smiling, they're hugging. Uh, there are thousands of uh, people who are attending that entire event. Uh, you know, they have to work together. Rahul Gandhi is there, he is their leader. He's asked them to hug. So what? What's the big deal? It looks like they've made peace. Or do you not believe that? So this reminds me of one episode in the Mahabharata uh, story where after the end of the war, the Pandavas go to meet Dhritarashtra. So Dhritarashtra asks for Bhima, and he wants to hug Bhima. So what happens is, uh, Sri Krishna knows that Bhima will be uh, critically injured by the Dhritarashtra hug. So he'll place an iron statue in front of Dhritarashtra, oh, which Dhritarashtra on. will embrace, and he'll uh, break the statue into pieces. This embrace is very similar to that episode. Aishwarya, you want to reply to that? He's replied with a, an analogy from the Mahabharat. And I'm sure, Aishwarya, you're wondering, uh, you know, uh, 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 how many more questions you're probably going to get on this one, one single topic. But this video is being used now by the BJP to saying, this is drama, this is all bonhomie for the cameras. These two men actually have their knives out for each other. There's no bonhomie, there's no peace that has been set here. Yeah, Aishwarya. Um, Shiv... I have to uh, thank Mr. Rudrapa for talking about the Mahabharata because if I pull on to that same analogy, let me talk about how the BJP are prima facie the Kauravas who are mired in a dharma in my state and the Congress party is getting ready to rid the state of that sort of evil. And Shiv, you know, this entire speculation, this large spectacle that the BJP wants to make out of what was a phenomenal event. I was personally there at that event. I saw everything that happened yeah. and if it did not strike fear in the hearts of the BJP. I don't know what else it was. The BJP wants to talk about all these internal issues with us while they have their own MLAs like Mr. Yatnal and other leadership and you um, you know talking against the party. You see their leaders also talking down to the Karyakartas. You see an en masse resignation campaign that has happened across the state for the BJP with the Yuva Morcha and they want to talk about us. Let's make two things very clear. One yeah. is that there is collective leadership and the senior high command has already decided that the Congress party is going to face these elections on that plank, that we will get our numbers and then we will decide who is to be chief minister. And second, this entire spectacle or rather a lot of this speculation about what is in bitter rivalry and whatnot. I have worked personally with both of them. For Sidra Monsav, I was on the committee them, uh, myself, you know, and I've seen the manner in which they have also worked that DK Shivkumar and his brother DK Suresh sir, both were also on the committee <laughs> and the amount of effort they also took for the program. The BJP would love to see a bitter internal struggle, but that is very, very far from the truth. And one thing emphatically clear, both the leaders themselves put party above their own personal power. I have seen them over the years and I am very certain that going forward and as it already has been, that we're going to work together in order to bring the government. But, but Aishwarya, 
clearly, the, you know, the fact, I, I, I don't want to trivialize this issue. I, I, I trust what you're saying because, because this is, after all, a party. It's not, it's not just two individuals. But since one of them will, you know, perhaps have to be the face, it could be somebody else, but it's uh, largely seen to be, it's going to be one of these two gentlemen who's going to be the chief ministerial face of the party. Uh, uh, this this video is very telling, isn't it? Because it 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 seems clear that the that the you know maybe the media coverage, maybe what the BJP has been saying, uh, you know maybe you know what's been happening on social media on this so-called feud has been weighing on Rahul Gandhi's mind, which is the precise reason why he's you can see him in that video clip asking the two leaders to hug. He's actually telling them. You know, no words are used, but he's gesticulating, which means you guys have to hug because it's important to set the record straight. You know, I think because internally all of us are already very aware of the fact that there is absolutely no sort of, you know, um, dissent or any sort of disagreement between them. I have seen them personally hug on several occasions. And I think, you know, Mr. Rahul Gandhi also, who did not come to sit in SOH anybody's peers or sit and reassure anyone, rather it was for a political affairs committee meeting of our state. He went to the Murga Mata, he went to the Hubli, yeah. the Gram of Yoga Sangha, where the flags are originally made. And as part of that, you know, and I think when even look at the manner in which Mr. D.K. Shukumar acted during the entire event. He was very magnanimous in his praise and his love and affection for Mr. Sidramaya, whether it was his speech or the body language, which I don't mm. think anybody can make. And Mr. Rahul Gandhi, let's just say, look at how the media is projecting you and I know everything's okay. Just mm. hug. He was any, you know, raising his hand to say he is a big leader. And that is something that the BJP is blowing out of proportion as a manner of distracting from the real issues that obviously, you know, heckle and rank their file and I think that is what has happened today. Shiv, all is extremely well with the Karnataka Congress and our tallest leaders and we are set, we are battle ready for 2023 while the right. BJP is trying to figure out who their next chief minister for the next six months is or I post election even have a chance in forming up. I, I take your point Aishwarya I, I, and, and one sincerely hopes that on the other side of this, uh, you know, this viral hug, that there won't be any sideways jibes and comments that can be misinterpreted as fuel, uh, you know, to keep this entire sense that there is a feud between these two leaders burning. Because I think you and I both know that there is a lot of innu innuendo. One has to admit there is a lot of innuendo. But when senior leaders make comments, they are going to be interpreted in a certain way. And especially since there have been no... Uh, you know, no explicit denials from either side about the lack of a feud that has perhaps made it an even bigger issue. Dr. Rangappa, uh, 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 we lost that line with you for a moment, but you're back now. Aishwarya of the Congress says the BJP is rattled by the size of that public event yesterday. And that's the reason why you are picking up little video clips to try and make some vicarious political point. All is well with the Congress. And yesterday's Siddhara Motsava was a demonstration that all is indeed well. How would you respond to that? Sir, huge meetings have happened before and will happen in the future also. There is nothing much to say about those things. But the fact of the matter is, the demonstration of a drama directed by Mr. Rahul Gandhi on the stage in Dawangere is a very clear indicator of all is not well in Congress. Because of two basic reasons. One, Mr. Sidramaya is a migrant from Jandadal who has come into the Congress and is trying to occupy the space there. And Mr. D.K. Shukumar has been a basic congressman for a number of years in Congress and he doesn't want to give his space up. So there is a cold war which has been going on in the Congress party for a quite a long time. Hmm. And both using their own tactics of putting their candidature forward. Mr. Sidramaya his uh, 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 followers to put up his candidate in front of the public by asking him to give major public statement. And Mr. Shukumar himself has expressed he is one of the contender for the can candidature of Karnataka. Yeah, he has. Coming election. So it is very obvious that they are both at each other and they have played out the drama that is played by these two people on the action and cut of uh, Rahul Gandhi. But it is very unfortunate that uh, they are thinking they are trying to take the people of Karnataka for a ride. No, it is not like that. People are quite intelligent. They can read what is happening between them. And it is very obvious. No, no, because also, uh, 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 you know, Aishwarya, uh, uh, 
at the risk of repeating, you know, the, the one of the things that I asked you, this, this, the, the, the video has become representative of something. It's not that we are trivializing an issue because, as you, you may have seen our coverage yesterday, we covered the rally and the, the the event and the birthday celebrations in a very big way. I am just saying that people are looking at the instruction to hug and, like Mr. Rangappa said, the fact that D K Shivakumar has, you know, uh, at events sort of projected himself as a chief ministerial candidate to mean that all is not well. You're saying all is well, but those divisions exist. There are factions. There are people putting up posters. There are people saying that this person should be the chief minister. So that united front is not visible. It's only visible in words. You know, Shiva, I think Mr. Rangappa spoke about um, Sidramaya coming from outside. Let's remind everybody here that Mr. Bommai also is somebody who joined the BJP in 99 and 2000. So he's also an outsider chief minister for you. And if there's one issue, let, let, let her finish, let her finish. I completely, either way, if I got my date wrong, he still came from the Janta party. Everybody knows his father, SR Bommai. But Shiv, the fact is what you're talking about, let me put one thing out. It is not wrong for anybody to have individual aspirations to lead the state. Mr. Sidramaya has already done it. There are seven cases. If you want to talk about Mr. D.K. Shukumar only, there are others also, and you have also reported on the fact that there are others with aspirations. But the one singular fact is, each and every single one of them have been told that your individual aspirations will not overpower the collective effort of the Congress party to remove the BJP from power and form government in 2023. And let me state that Mr. D.K. Shukumar, for the years of his service and for the fact that he's such a tall leader, has also appealed to his community, while Mr. Sidramaya appeals to a mass OBC community that he comes from. You see senior leaders of other different communities and you realize all of them together will only power and further empower the Congress. And the leadership has acknowledged that. This rift and these sort of divides or the dissent that you believe exist in the Congress party, whatever they may be, it is not for the speculation of the BJP who needs to set their own house in order. Rather, it is for the Congress themselves and the congressmen who have already acknowledged that 2023 is bigger than any man's individual aspiration. Okay. I think Mr. D.K. Kumar has made that very clear that he does not care to become anybody except to be a person in government because that is what the Congress party needs. And if the leadership and the national leadership come and talk about furthering that bond, homie, I do not think there is anything wrong in it whatsoever, Shiv. much uh, to both uh, Dr. Rangappa and Aishwarya for joining us on this. Democracy demands that every election should be a good, strong fight. It shouldn't be, uh, you know, uh, it, it shouldn't be that one side is divided and scattered, the other side gets a walkover. That's been happening in election after election in this country. It should not happen in Karnataka. There has to be a good fight. Voters should have options. We'll keep a very close watch on that. On the other side, I'm going to show you how Priyanka Chopra, meanwhile, has gone down to Poland to meet with Ukrainian refugees. It was a beautiful moment. Full story on that next. NASA beamed doctors into the middle of the International Space Station while they were physically on Earth. This might seem like a scene from a sci-fi movie, but this technology now exists. NASA tried this new method to ensure medical help is provided to people in adverse situations. This is being called the first holoportation handshake from Earth in space. So what is holoportation and how does it work? According to NASA, it is a capture technology that allows high-quality 3D models of people to be reconstructed, compressed and transmitted live anywhere in real time. When these images are combined with mixed reality displays such as HoloLens, it allows users to see, hear and interact with remote participants in 3D. The technology gives a feeling as if the person is right in front of you. NASA says that the technology could be highly effective in deep space where communication lag is a major problem due to the immense distance between Earth and other objects. Using the Microsoft HoloLens Kinect camera with custom software, NASA flight surgeon Dr. Joseph Schmidt and their teams were holoported. They interacted with astronaut Thomas Pesquet in a two-way conversation. 
Holopotation is not new. It has been in use since at least 2016 by Microsoft. But this was the first use in such an extreme and remote environment as space. Rahul Gandhi launches a no-holds-barred attack on the BJP RSS over its Tiranga campaign in the 75th year of Indian independence. But should the Tiranga, the national flag, be hostage to politics in the first instance? Among my special guests will be the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi, Gopal Gandhi. Also, he's the new star of Indian athletics. Tejaswin Shankar wins a bronze at the Commonwealth Games in the high jump, but he almost didn't make it to the Games, had to take the Athletics Federation to court to actually compete. We'll tell you his story and much more on the news today. News without the noise. Priyanka Chopra Jonas has teamed up with UNICEF to meet and amplify support for children and women from Ukraine who've crossed the border into Poland and are currently staying in blue dot centers. Here's a full report from that meeting. But we need to be stronger than them uh, just to be a support for these refugees. Yep, that's what I mean. Like, how, how do you do that? When you yourself need support, when you yourself need Priyanka Chopra Jonas, who's the global UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador, is on a mission in Poland. The actress is spending time in the Ukrainian refugee camps, meeting and interacting with children who are brought into care because of the ongoing war between Ukraine and Russia. She shared pictures and videos where she can be seen doing activities playing around and making paintings with the kids. Meanwhile, on work front, Priyanka is gearing up for her debut web series, Citadel, which is produced by the Russo brothers. She also has Hollywood films such as Ending Things and It's All Coming Back to Me in the pipeline and has signed Farhan Akhtar's G. Lezara with Katrina Kaif and Alia Bhatt. Huge political war erupting over Raid Raj from the Gandhis to Arpita to Sanjay Raut of the Shiv Sena. It's the enforcement directorate all across the country. Big focus with Pooja on the other side. <laughs> 